Hey everyone, it is September. It's actually a week into September, which is wild. I'm filming my August favorites today, running a little bit behind because I feel like the last week of August into Labor Day is always a little bit chaotic. And even though I know a lot of people are transitioning into fall, we are in the middle of an extreme heat wave here in LA and on the West Coast in general and in many parts of the world. So I hope you're staying cool. I'm doing my best. I was in Palm Springs this last weekend on the hottest weekend of the year in the desert. It was oppressively hot. Even though I love summer, I'm very much a summer baby. I love hot weather. I am kind of mentally transitioning into late summer, burnt colors, deep oranges, maroons, that sort of color palette. So you will see that reflected in my favorites. I have a bunch of makeup. There were a ton of makeup releases recently and some skincare some body care and a couple of fashion items as well so I'm gonna start with makeup I have tried to use as many of these products as possible I've reviewed most of these on my channel throughout the month so I will reference those longer reviews as well as cut in footage of application so the first favorite is no surprise because I loved this the second I used it and it's the summer Fridays sheer skin tint I did review this on YouTube I've also done a demo on Instagram Instagram and TikTok, I think, but this is the sheer dewy skin tint of my dreams. It's very luminous and hydrating, but it's not oily and it doesn't break up on my skin. So somehow it's hydrating and dewy, but not oily or greasy. It just kind of stays put and it has this kind of grippy quality to it that feel, that forms a film over the skin, which is what allows it to maintain that hydrated appearance without just like sliding around on the skin. I feel like it has the best of both worlds of being a slightly longer lasting skin tint. I mean, it's not gonna be a 12, 16 hour skin tint, but a solid eight to 10 hour skin tint with very sheer coverage, but it's also very, very blurring. So you get this long wear quality while also having a very hydrated base. I wear shade four right now. I also picked up shade three, which I think will be my winter shade. Honestly, it's very sheer, so I could use both of these probably interchangeably, but there are 10 shades in this range that range from very fair to very, very deep with beautiful undertones. So I'm very impressed by that. As for cheek products, I reviewed the About Face um, Cheek, what are these called? Cheek Freak Blush Balms um, earlier this month, a couple of weeks ago, and I do really, really like this formula. So it is um, a monochromatic packaging. There are, I think, 12 or 13 shades, and it looks like this. It's a balm formula, but it actually goes on the cheeks with a pretty natural finish. It, it's almost like a creme to powder. And I have really, really enjoyed these. I'm actually wearing the shade called Smash right now, which is my favorite shade in the line. One thing I have to say as a caveat to these is that they are very fragile. So if they are being delivered to you in hot weather, be careful because they can melt off and sort of come off the base. So it's a little bit finicky in that way. I hope that the brand can work to address that because I really, really like this formula and this kind of packaging delivery system. I find it easy to apply with fingers or with a brush and it blends out really nicely. You can also definitely build it up if you want um, richer pigment. I do think overall the line leans a little bit warmer and slightly peachy. So I'm curious to see if they'll come out with other shades. Um, the one other caveat I have in terms of application is that this is a silicone heavy formula. That's kind of what gives it that like blurring, spreadable ability, that creme to powder finish. But that means that if you have any texture or dry spots or breakouts or something like that, it can catch on those areas. For example, I have a breakout here that's healing over and you know when it's healing and it's dried out, it's a little bit flaky. I did notice that it caught on some flaky skin around that area simply because that's what silicone does. Especially when there's pigment in it, it can potentially catch on those areas. So you just have to be a little bit more careful. Again, I don't think you can probably really see it on camera, but just a minor note in terms of application and technique. 
I've also been wearing my Charlotte Tilbury um, Color of Passion Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. So it's called the Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. The shade is Color of Passion. And this is a great transitional blush, I think, because it's on the deeper side. It's a berry almost like a raspberry sort of shade. And I tested this and reviewed this in my full Charlotte Tilbury brand review that I did earlier this month. That was a long video, um, but this was one of my favorite things that I did review and include in that video. I also have a 15% off code for Charlotte Tilbury that works anytime on their website. So I'll link that below. But this is a dewier formula, for example, than the About Face Blush Balm. The About Face Blush Balm sets to a bit more of a powdery, not exactly powdery, but like a creme powder finish. This one is definitely juicier. It's more emollient. You can tell there are more oils in the formula. And so it gives you a slightly glossier look. This is also one of the rare cheek and lip formulas that I actually like to wear both on the cheeks and on the lips, which never happens. Usually if it's a cheek and lip thing, I just like to wear it on the cheeks, but somehow this actually looks good both on the lips and the cheeks because it does give you that juicy kind of popsicle stain pop of color. Then let's talk about bronzers. There have been so many bronzer releases this year, this summer, and even in the last month. So first let me tell you what I have on my cheeks. I haven't reviewed this I think yet on YouTube, but I have shared a demo of it and my full review and thoughts on Instagram. But this is the Merit um, Bronze Balm, and this is the shade Sen, which I think is the third deepest in a six shade range. And this is a very natural, dewy, sheer bronzer. It's what I'm wearing right now as a first layer, and I have another bronzer on top of it, which I'll talk about in a second. But this is very much um, a balm. I feel like it's well-named in that way because a balm is a little bit more sheer, for example, than a cream bronzer, which might have more opacity. And this also has a sheen to it because it has, I think, more oils in the formula that lend it that balmy texture. My favorite way as someone with combo oily in the summer skin is to apply this with an angled brush. So you totally can just like swipe on and blend it out with fingers or something like that. But with oilier products, I actually like to take the brush onto the bronzer, pick some up, and then tap it onto the cheeks. And I find that actually gives me the most skin-like application without over applying and without picking up foundation underneath, without feeling like it's getting too oily on my cheeks. But of course you could totally just swipe it on and blend it out and go. Because this is so sheer, I actually think this is a great mistake-proof bronzer. You really can't overdo it and it's easy to blend. It completely aligns with the Merit brand, which is natural, easy to use makeup that gives you a very fresh looking appearance. And so it makes sense that they would release a really sheer, beautiful, dewy bronzer. I also really love that the shape of the tube is an oval. So it fits in the curves of your faces really nicely, like under the cheekbone or around the forehead. It doesn't spread too far if you are applying it directly to your face. So I think that's really thoughtfully designed. Then I have another cream bronzer, which is the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer. And these are kind of on the opposite spectrum. This is sheer and dewy, whereas this is a little bit more pigmented and on the matte side. This is definitely the most matte version of a cream bronzer that I've personally tried. I said when I reviewed this, like when I first opened the compact, I couldn't believe that this was a cream because doesn't it look like a pressed powder? It still blows my mind, but I've really enjoyed this because it's very long lasting because of that slightly more powdery finish. I have the shade um, number two medium. It's a very warm shade 
and it works nicely for my skin tone. I find that this blends out best with the same technique where I take a brush, I'll dip directly into the compact, and then I will diffuse on the cheeks. And I think in general, that just gives you a more controlled application. I think if you have dry skin, you want to apply this over a dewier base. Some people I've heard have felt like this is a patchy bronzer. I don't feel that way, but I can see why a drier skin type might think that because this is a more matte powdery finish. I would apply it then over a more emollient base in terms of skincare or your foundation or whatever. For me, I get a really nice like diffused, um, almost airbrush sort of finish with this and I have really enjoyed it. I think it's a great cream foundation that is long lasting if you're looking for that and also that's not too shiny, not too dewy, not emollient. It just like sets down and it stays there all day long. On the powder end of bronzers, I have the Make Beauty Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Bronzer. I keep forgetting that name. I've also done a full review of these. This comes in eight shades very impressive from fair to deep with a range of undertones and the shade range is so good they absolutely nailed it so this is a powder bronzer as i mentioned but it's the most skin-like powder the most skin-like pressed powder that i've ever tried in terms of bronzer it is a very densely packed formula and the term micro suede is really accurate here because the surface of the powder feels like suede or it feels like velvet. There's this really soft, finely milled quality to it, but it's not a powdery um, powder <laughs> at all. You know what I mean? When you pick it up with a brush and sometimes with a more loosely packed powder, it kicks up a lot of powder. This doesn't do that. You don't get any kick up at all. So actually this is what I applied over the Merit bronzer earlier. I just took a fluffy brush and I tapped it in here and I didn't even apply a lot of pigment. I just wanted to kind of set the cream bronzer that I put down. And you can do that with this because you're able to work in really sheer layers. So it's not overly pigmented, it's not too much of anything. And even though this is a matte formula, I actually think it still looks really skin-like. It doesn't have shimmer, it doesn't have any glitter or anything like that, but it still looks really skin-like and not powdery on the skin. So this is also a mistake-proof bronzer, I think for people who are fast with their makeup, doing their makeup on the go, you just don't wanna to think too hard about it. And especially because it's sheer, it's an easy formula to work with. And these are also um, refillable. So this is a magnetic um, compact, it's really beautiful. It's got this blue and silver and you can refill the pans really easily if you ever go through it, even though it's a really big pan. I do have a 15% off discount code for Make Beauty that works anytime, so I'll include that in the description box as well. I have another new launch and Tower 28 has had a couple of new launches this month. This one is not out yet as of today. I think it's launching tomorrow, but I got my hands on it um, because I went to the Tower 28 launch party and this mascara is so good. So this is called, what is it called? The Make Waves Mascara. And Amy, the founder of the brand, is Asian. So I think she really understands what it's like to have fine, very straight, short lashes. And she told me they worked on like 88 iterations of this mascara. It's like the hardest thing that they've ever had to formulate because I think mascara, people have different needs from mascara and to make a mascara that hits every mark can be quite a challenge. But for me, this is a really, really good mascara that kind of hits all of the marks that I like in a mascara. So the component is adorable. It has the Tower 28 branding and the squiggle logo there. I am wearing it now, so I'll include a demo. The brush is a plastic bristle brush, which I actually really love. It has a slight curve, but it's not too curved and it's not too long. Sometimes curved ones can be so curved that they can smear really easily. This is just 
slightly curved, like just enough. It's not too long so you can really wiggle and get in the corners of your eyes, especially if you have smaller eyes. The thing that I really love about this wand is that it's very much like a comb. And so even though the bristles are not super long, it doesn't pick up a ton of product at once so that you're able to work it through the lashes, even if you have really fine, delicate, straight lashes, and it doesn't over apply. It's really good at combing the mascara through the lashes and it creates separation and definition. It's lengthening. It's not the most volumizing, but I actually prefer that because I like to have more fanned out lashes personally. But if you like volume, you can totally build this up. I'm actually wearing two coats on each lash today. It's just a really easy to manipulate mascara. You can really get in the corner of your eyes and it's just, it's so good. I really, really love it. I think they nailed the formula and I can see myself using this and repurchasing this over and over and over. And I'm not even wearing my usual mascara primers, by the way. Um, I'm not wearing my Peri Para lash fixer. I'm not wearing any of that. It's just two coats of this mascara and my lashes are upright. They're not dropping. Amy did say that was a really key part of this formula that they went for to make sure that lashes wouldn't drop. This is also formulated with sensitive eyes in mind, so it's easy to remove. It um, does not require rubbing and tugging. And even though it's not technically a waterproof or water resistant mascara, I, have, I haven't found any smudging personally. So a home run, honestly, for me. As always, the Tower 28 price point is great. This is $20 and it just does everything I want it to do. The other Tower 28 launch that I've loved is the One Liner. And this is a multi-use pencil. I've honestly only used it on my lips because the shades are perfect for that. So there are three shades. This is available on the Tower 28 website as well as on Credo. So I'll link everything below. But the lightest shade that I'm wearing now is called Fill Me In. There's also a medium rosy brown shade called Work of Art, and then there's a deeper brown shade called Draw Me. And I've used all of these, I've swatched all of them, lip swatched all of them, we'll include that footage here. I love these because they're a traditional wooden pencil, but they're so creamy. And usually wooden pencils are a little bit on the drier side, which I like because they that means they're longer lasting, but this gives me the best of both worlds. It's creamy, but then it sets down and it's long lasting as well. I think the shade curation is really nice for this initial launch because there's a light, medium, and deep, and I really hope they come out with other shades. I know that um, Gabby, Gabby Alvarez, has also really been liking these to color correct. They're that creamy. She's been using them to color correct around the eyes. Um, you can also use these on the cheeks. You can use them as eyeliner. So again, you can use this any way you want, but I've just really been loving these for lip liner. And I feel like between these three shades, I kind of have everything I need, usually from a lip liner. For eyeshadows, I have two products, a single and a palette. And the single has definitely been the most used. This is the new Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize shade in Exaggerize. And I have demoed this. I've worn it on camera so many times. Every time I've done makeup this month and I just want something quick and easy, I have reached for this without fail. I've probably worn it like 15 out of the last 30 days at least because it's just such an easy to wear shade. It is the Eyes to Mesmerize formula, which is like a whipped moussey cream shadow, but I just can't get enough of this shade. It has a warm base, but a silvery topper. And so there's this peachy warmth to it, but it shines and it, it, it looks wet. It makes the eyelid look wet. And I've gotten so many compliments on this. I went to my friend's bachelorette party this weekend and like six different people wanted to wear this because they saw it on my eyes as we were getting ready to go out and they all got in on it. And it's just a crowd pleaser. It's the kind of shade that everyone likes and wants to wear because it's just pretty and it's easy to use. I also love the balance of the warm base with the cooler micro glitters, but it's also not 
exactly sparkly. It's not obviously sparkly. It just looks like the most beautiful glossy sheen on the eyes and it's my new favorite one and done shade right now. The eyeshadow palette I'm going to mention is going to surprise you because I haven't used it on YouTube yet, I don't think. This is a new to me indie brand called What's Up Beauty and this is their geode eyeshadow palette. They sent over their geode collection which is the palette along with corresponding nail polish shades and the shades are like such a great match. It's a beautiful collection. I had not heard of What's Up Beauty before and now suddenly I'm like, they make some of my favorite eyeshadow textures that I've ever used. So this is the Geode palette. It's a cardboard palette um, and there are one, two, three, 12 shades and there are four mattes, um, a couple of crystally shades and a couple of metallics and a couple of duochromes. This palette is made in Italy and my first thought when I swatched these shades was I wonder who else they share a lab with because the formulas feel very elegant and they feel very close to the Pat McGrath astral baked shades. Even though I don't think these are actually baked, it has a similar flakiness to it um, and they just feel so expensive. I think this palette is $41, um, but it feels much more high-end than that in terms of the pigments and the performance. I also love the murky mattes in here. So there's a taupe shade, a kind of rosy brown, and then they get kind of weird. Oh, there's actually five mattes. I think I said four. There's a mustardy yellow, a really murky mossy green, and a deep brown. And I feel like the yellow and the green bring an edge to this palette and a versatility to this palette that I would not have expected otherwise. And I think if those shades weren't there, it would lean mostly rosy purpley, but because those shades are there in combination with the gold and the greens in this palette, it makes it kind of weird in a cool way. So I'm wearing this on my eyes today. I just put the shade Rock This Matte through my crease with a little bit of Rhodonite, this rosier matte. And then I took uh, Agate, which is a duochrome red and like greenish gold. I put crystal, which is this like lavender lilac duochrome on the center of my lid. That's that blue shift. And then I put rose quartz, which is a really pretty iridescent pink on my inner corner. So I hope you can see the dimension and complexity. These are all shades that look different when the light catches them at different angles. Even though these are so dimensional and there are so many sparkly shades in here, they somehow don't have a lot of fallout. And it continues to puzzle me because even when I go into these with a brush and not my finger, I don't get fallout all over my face. The glitters don't drop all over my face throughout the day. So there's something very um, elegantly formulated about these textures that makes application easy, even with textures and shades that are not always the easiest to apply. I do have to say my favorite, favorite shade in this palette is this shade Peridot. No surprise, you know I love greens, but just wait till you see me swatch this. The first time I swatched this, it took my breath away. So just wait till you see this. It's the most beautiful, bright, iridescent, sparkly, wet looking green. And it just has the most beautiful brightness to it. It doesn't have a deep base or much of a base at all. Actually, a lot of these shimmers don't really have much of a base. They're very like sheeny, iridescent shades. Um, and so they just look very skin-like because there isn't a lot of heavy color coming through. I did a look on Instagram with Peridot all over the eye and it was just so beautiful and bright and sparkling and it just made me so happy. So this has been a palette that has really, really wowed me. I have to admit that I'm not the most well-versed when it comes to indie beauty, but this palette is a reminder that indie beauty is really pushing the envelope when it comes to color stories and risk-taking and formulas and innovation and so, they definitely have my attention. And now I'm like, hmm, I guess I need to dive more into indie beauty, huh? It's like, I, I know they're all out there, but I haven't um, 
invested my time or energy there, and this palette has definitely made me curious. My skincare has been mostly the same, but I have two new additions. So first up is the SkinCeuticals Phyto Corrective Essence Mist. So this is an extension of the SkinCeuticals Phyto Corrective Gel Serum line, and I actually have an almost empty one in rotation right now. The Phyto Corrective line is specifically meant to help calm irritated or red redness prone skin and it has some botanicals you know skinceuticals it's very like science forward but there's also botanicals in there and i do find that it's really hydrating it's calming i have um rosacea some mild rosacea you can probably see it coming through actually on my chest right now because i got a heat rash this weekend but when my skin is inflamed and angry i find that the phytocorrective line really brings it down so i'm so excited that they made an essence mist for it it has very similar ingredients but a much lighter delivery system so the gel serum is definitely like a bouncy richer gel this is a very fine mist did you see that i you probably heard it more than saw it but it just creates the most delightful light whisper feather of a mist and so the component is beautiful it comes in this green glass container and you can use this in your skincare routine you can also use it throughout the day over makeup it's not emollient so it's not an oily mist it's just for pure hydration and calming the other skincare product is from jordan samuel skin and if you know jordan samuel skin you know they do not launch products frequently. They have a very tightly curated edit of skincare, and when they add something to the line, they do it with a lot of intention and a lot of thought behind each release. So they brought out the Mandelic Exfoliating Mask, which is super exciting because they don't have other acids in the range. They don't have an acid exfoliator. If anything, Jordan, who is an esthetician, talks about how people often over exfoliate. So enter the Mandelic Exfoliating Mask. This uses Mandelic Acid, which is a very gentle exfoliator. It's not anywhere as harsh as your glycolics, your salicylic acids, it's not like that. It's very gentle and this formula also includes, um, what was it, lava clay and charcoal powder. So it has um, a cleansing property to it. I've been using this um, about one to two times a week for the last couple of weeks because they sent it to me before launch. And it's really nice because I've used it as a wash off mask. I like to use this when I'm in the bath and I leave it on for 15, 20 minutes. And it's just enough to give you a little bit of exfoliation without overdoing it. And I think that makes this a product that a lot of skin types can use, even people who are more sensitive to traditional acids. And because it's a wash off product, you get that short contact therapy versus leaving it on and having it on your face all night long. Currently I'm using tretinoin, which if you know retinoids is strong. So it's nice to have a lighter acid that I can actually use and cycle with my tretinoin to get that little bit of exfoliation without killing my skin barrier. And if you know Jordan, he's very, very adamant about protecting and nourishing and enhancing your skin barrier. So I think this is a really thoughtful release. It doesn't give you any tingling, any burning. It's not anything like that at all. It's just a little something to give your face um, some love, a little bit of exfoliation, but again, nothing too strong. Then I have a couple of body care products. So first up is actually a multi-use product and mine is almost empty. This is the Violette Boom Boom Milk, which is described as an all over cream spray. So typically when the bottle is full, it's a biphase mist. So you have the oily, um, richer ingredients on top and then the water ingredients on bottom and you mix it together before you use it. So basically I've used this either in a few different ways. Sometimes I use it before body lotion and this adds a little bit of extra oil but also adds a really nice glide for body lotion to go on top of. 
or I've used it if I, in lieu of body lotion, if I'm on the go or if I'm feeling lazy, or let's say I am wearing shorts or something and I'm about to go out, but I don't want the heaviness of a body lotion on my legs, but I know I need moisture, that's when I will use this. I've also used this on the ends of my hair, so it's a really nice way to add that little bit of shine, um, add some moisture to any dry ends without committing to like a hair oil or getting your hands dirty. <laughs> so it's just been a really great multi-use product. Again, a bunch of the girls I was with this weekend really liked using this. And um, it's a nice way to add a little bit of oil without adding an oil, if you know what I mean. I've mentioned soft services a few times. Um, I think their uh, Speed Soak and their Caria body lotion were in my July favorites. Well, this month I opened up the smoothing solution and this is a clear gel that includes 10% um, lactic acid and 5% urea. So lactic acid helps chemically exfoliate your skin and I've specifically used this on my elbows, my legs, and my bikini line as well. And not right after shaving, but maybe the day after shaving. Um, this is a really, really lovely chemical exfoliant for the body. Lactic acid is nice because it's a little bit gentler than glycolic, so my skin tolerates it a little better. I don't get any burning or tingling, but it helps um, soften the skin. It helps chemically exfoliate any dead skin. And the more that I've included exfoliants in my body care routine, the softer and more hydrated my skin feels, which totally makes sense, right? When you exfoliate the top layer of the skin, your skin just feels softer. I also feel like my legs, I don't know about you, but like no matter how much lotion I put on, they always need more. They could always use more. And so rather than piling on more and more and more, I've realized like, oh, there's actually dead skin on my legs, duh. And um, exfoliating that has allowed the moisturizing ingredients that I use on other days to penetrate more effectively. This is also hydrating on its own. I don't find that I need to add more lotion on top, though you certainly could. They say this is good for keratosis pilaris, so bumpy skin, crepey skin, ingrown hair, discoloration, exfoliation of neck and chest, which I would not do because I have sensitive skin, but you, you could if you don't. So yeah, the other thing is that I don't need a lot of this. I just need like a small dollop and it has a really spready quality to it. So it doesn't take much. I feel like this five ounce tube, it's a metal tube, will last me forever. A couple of fashion bits and then I'll wrap up. Um, first, I want to mention the earrings that I'm wearing and these are the new squiggle earrings from Ready Made. Um, Ready Made, I wear their jewelry all the time. I have this ring on from them. I've also worn the green version of this ring, which I often get questions about. I have a bunch of their necklaces, earrings. Um, Gabby, Gabby Alvarez has a collab with them. If you've seen her nose bridge cuffs, they're incredible. Um, they just launched their second iteration of that, which I'll link below. But I have been getting nonstop wear out of these since I got them. So Ready Made is um, affordable jewelry that is designed with sensitive skins in mind. So they don't use nickel. I don't know exactly what their metals are made out of. They're not plated. Again, I don't know what they're composed of, but they never mess up my skin. I can usually only wear plated or solid jewelry. So this is a shocker for me that I'm able to wear these things, but um, they have these squiggle earrings in silver and in gold. I just doubled them up on my um, lobe piercings and I think they're really fun together, but they're also really cute individually. But I just wanted to shout those out because they've been bringing me a lot of joy and they just make me feel really happy and playful when I'm wearing them. The last two items are actually both bags and they're both big bags, but they're they're different. They're big in different ways and they are used in different occasions. So the first bag is from a brand called Graf Lance and they're made here in LA. And I was gifted this product through the lobby and I've been working with the lobby recently um, 
which is a retailer of various like indie and smaller like boutique brands. And a lot of times the brands that they bring in have a focus on sustainability and craftsmanship and they're usually smaller batch. And so Graf Lance is one of the brands that I was introduced to. So I received their Hana Large Canvas Boat Tote, I think it's called. I can't remember the full name, but I will show you how I style it and I will link it below. It's a canvas bag that comes in many colors. I got the ivory color and it's lined with leather. And this bag is huge. My computer, my laptop, I have a 13 inch laptop, looks small in this bag. I could fit an entire, I mean, it could be a weekender. It's like that size, but because it's a tote, it's very flexible. And when you're carrying it around, I find that the corners kind of slouch in. So it just becomes like this slouchy tote that can expand and expand and expand if you need it. I've taken it to the farmer's market, carried everything I need. I have put a jacket in it. I've put a book in it, my laptop. It just holds everything. It's like the Mary Poppins bag. It does have a small pocket as well as a button snap for if you need closure. It's not, again, it's a tote, so it's not gonna give you like security in terms of closing up all the way, but it does give you convenience. And it's a higher end version of a tote, but because it's leather lined and the canvas is I don't think it's coated, but it's very thick. It's high quality. I'm confident that this is going to last a long time and it's going to be the kind of thing that I can just get tons of use out of. The last bag has a bit of a story. So I have had my eye on the Dragon Diffusion bags for years. I've lusted specifically after the Nantucket bag in the caramel brown tan shade. And it's been on my wish list forever. This is like a 400 something dollar bag. So it's not a cheap bag. It's not a purchase I would make lightly. And as I was researching this brand, I was thinking about how it's not branded itself. It doesn't have any logos. I think um, Dragon Diffusion includes like a small coin logo on the inside of their bags, but there's no obvious branding. And I, I figured this is a handmade woven bag. So I thought, let me just check Etsy. I feel like someone might be making this bag somewhere in the world. Lo and behold, enter Altica, which is I think a co-op of leather artisans. And I found an exact dupe for the Dragon Diffusion Nantucket bag. And I don't use the term dupe lightly. I think it's way overused these days, but the quality of this leather is incredible. The weave is all hand done. It's stunning and there are no loose ends. It's very sturdy. And so I bought the bag. And I just have to say the quality, the craftsmanship is stunning. I have a feeling that Dragon Diffusion probably sources from the region where these bags are made, I think in India. And so they are honestly almost identical. I think the dimensions are slightly, slightly different by an inch or two, but you would never know. I got the big size, so it's kind of that like landscape style size and I love it so much. It holds everything. I would even go for a bigger size. I would even buy this in black. I would buy it in maybe their other colored leathers. It's just that well-made. I love the tan color because I have a lot of black bags. I have a few white bags, but I don't have hardly any brown leather bags. This is the perfect warm caramel shade. And so I feel like even though it's woven because it's leather, it can be worn all year. And especially going into fall, I love camel, warm, burnt, rusty tones. It will pair really well with that, with any neutral. And I think it's a bag that you can wear casually um, and just very easily without much thought because it just kind of goes with everything, but it adds a little bit of texture and richness to an outfit. So just wanted to mention that in case there are any other people out there that are lusting after Dragon Diffusion bags, I will link that below as well. So that is everything for me. I didn't think I had a lot of favorites this month until I started filming and I just kept talking and talking and now we're here. But I would love to know what your favorites were in August. If there's anything you think I absolutely must try, I always like hearing what is in everyone's rotation. So let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.